All right, everybody, welcome to class. Jay Guru Dev, praise the Lord. This is the Alpha Academy. I'm AZD, AZ motherfucking D, also known as that. Welcome to class. This is for adults, okay? Adult men, no women, and no children allowed to watch or listen any longer. You're responsible for your own condition. This is not a therapy session. This is the truth that's been revealed to me in my life. I just share it willingly, and it's uh, it's my privilege to be able to share this truth and be a witness to my own life. We are IMC Nation International Mastermind Council. International Ministers Council worldwide. We're getting that shit, nigga. How's that? <laughs> All right. Tonight, today, we have a very special guest. I just saw her come on right now. My friend Christine Smith, the beautiful, the intelligent, the elegant, the all that, and a little bit more, plus a little bit of a dash of salt, like ching, ching, ching. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Give it a second. I'm going to mute you for a second, Christine. We'll get to you in a minute, okay? In a minute or two. Looking fabulous. All right? If I knew, I would have, I would have done myself a little bit better, but I'm, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought we were just going for coffee. I didn't know we are going to go for a fucking uh, red carpet. Okay. I'm going to get to you in a second. Okay, everybody. Welcome to class. Today's class, obviously, is going to be special because we're going to be in dialogue for a short time with Christine Smith. I'll get to that in a minute. But first... Today's main theme, it's Friday, it's the weekend. And every single day, truth is revealed to me because I've committed myself to this path 100%. This is who I am, this is what I do 24 hours a day. Every fiber of my being is this. And what is this thing? It's the understanding of the connection between man and woman, man and man, man and life, man and God, man and nature. I've just been more than fascinated. I've been obsessed, you could even say possessed, by the idea of understanding that you exist as I exist somehow. And I see what goes on in my head. Woo! I see my world. And you're telling me that all these little squares I'm looking at, and I don't mean because you're a square because you're like not cool, but I mean, you know, square, Hollywood squares on TV. All these little Hollywood squares I'm looking at, you have you yourself have this infinite experience that I'm having. Are you kidding me? Like, hey, fellow traveler, what's it been like so far? Right? How's life treated you? Have you been fighting life? Have you been betrayed? Have you been stabbed? Have you been? Uh, did you? Hey, did you fall in love? What was that like? Did you feel everything I felt when I fell in love? Did you have your heart broken? Huh? Did you think you were going to die? Did you think about killing yourself? Hey, I've been in all of those. Then I have a question for you. How did you handle it? Are you over it? Did it fuck you up? Are you the same? Do you feel what I feel? Like I'm an innocent little child tumbling through eternity, trying to pretend like I know shit? Do you get that feeling? Do you feel alone? Are there people around you who care for you? Hey, do you know where you're going after this? Is there a heaven or hell? Are you going there? Is karma real? Are you coming back? Is it done? Is this it? YOLO. What's going on out there? Can anybody hear me? We're stuck in these pods. I'm stuck at the edge of my eyeballs and, and face, and I'm trying to broadcast into the universe. Can anybody out there hear me? Are you also a prisoner of your mind? Do you have voices in your head that are not you, that tell you what to do, where to go? Have you ever not trusted your gut feeling? How did that go? Do you know where you're going to be in five years from now? Could you predict your life where you are today? Hey, one more question. Have you ever seen aliens? While we're on the subject, have you had any contact with this thing called God? Have you seen, heard felt this thing that everyone talks about God. Do you know what I'm talking about? And the final question. Are you all right? Are you all right or not? 
because it ain't easy, right? You okay? One message from where I'm at. Don't ever give up. If if we if we never see each other again, we just pass by. Don't ever give up. Hang the fuck in there. All right. That's the class. Now, if you understand all of that, I believe from the bottom of my heart, as my life proves it, that you're going to be able to have the most beautiful women in your life. And not only that, have a fulfilling relationship. You're going to have to understand all of that. Because whether you see whatever you see, right? Whatever you see. Some of you guys I've known for many years. Some of you guys live here. You're next door. And some of you guys are the first time you're watching me, right? Whatever you see from your perspective, what I just told you is the truth of my experience. That other shit is just the game of life, okay? I'm, I'm not caught up. I'm not attached to any of this shit that you see. And so our job is to free ourselves, as my teacher told me, from the chains that shackled our forefathers. You and I are supposed to do better than dad and mom. And if you did that, hey, hey, good job. But you gotta be an upgrade. You gotta be an upgrade, all right? And then you gotta grab the wisdom that you have and pass it on to the next one, whatever that next one is. And you speak, even if your voice is shaking, you speak. Sometimes my voice shakes. It was shaking a little bit when I was talking, a little bit of emotions coming up, a little boohoo, but didn't wanna do nothing like that, all right? Now, that sounds pretty serious, right? But it's the truth. Now we're going to get to the subject. Alpha Academy. What the hell is Alpha Academy? What are we doing here? How do you get a beautiful woman? I love beautiful women because beautiful women love me. You see that? I love hanging around beautiful women because beautiful women like hanging around with me. I would not like someone who didn't like me. You know how difficult that would be? I love beautiful women, but they hate me. And I'm telling you that because what you feel for somebody reverberates back at you. It bounces back. And today, we're very lucky because when I was growing up, the hottest women on the planet had a title. Playboy, playmate. Dang, a playboy, playmate? Now this... Generation, only fans, hoes, hoes and tricks, hoes and tricks, chicks and hoes. Bunch of hoes. You don't even have to look good anymore. As a woman, you could have rolls around your stomach. You could have everything. You, you can't be perfect like a Playboy Playmate was. And all the Playboy Playmates were perfect. Jesus, they were perfect. Head to toe from their little pinky toe was perfect. Even if you found toe jam, it would be glitter. It wouldn't be toe jam. There was glitter between their toes. They never even farted. They, they potpourri came out of their assholes. They were the perfect creature of God, the Playboy Playmate. And today we have one with us. She was the former Miss December. And uh, I think you're all going to be excited because I'm going to talk to her a little bit. And we're going to get to ask some questions. Okay, Christine, we're going to unmute. Can you unmute? I'm free. <laughs> oh, I'm speaking to a celebrity. I've met so many celebrities in my life. But if I could go back in time, Christine, and as a young man be asked, who do you want to hang out with? I would say, Playboy Playmate. They would say, what about, what about Bruce Lee? I would say, I love Bruce Lee. God, he's, he's, he's my hero. But I'm going to hang out with Playboy Playmate. So you are, you are a celebrity for me. It's nice to see you. How's life, Christine? What's Thank happening? you. It's nice to be here. It's good. It's very, very exciting. I'm looking forward to speaking to everyone. Uh -huh. Hopefully I have good advice or at least I'll be entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it'll be both. Um, Christine, you were a playmate. I'm going to ask you some questions to give reality for everybody, okay? Um, does that mean that you got to uh, stay at the mansion with you or no? How, what was yeah, that like? so I lived there for three months while I shot my issue. Uh, and I actually lived there when they were filming The Girls Next Door. So I was there with Kendra, Bridget, and Holly. So we went out yeah, every right. Thursday. Yeah, a lot of fun. Well, let me tell you a little story, okay? So The Girls Next Door was on TV. 
I was obviously a, a person living life. And um, during that time, Tiger Woods had cheated on his girlfriend or something and he was being shamed. And uh, Bill Clinton had Monolowski suck his dick or something and all this stuff happened, right? And me as a man, I had a problem seeing powerful men apologize for being with other women, right? And so I had a girlfriend at the time, but I was studying the dynamics of attraction and, and nature and things like that. And I knew where I was going with it. And so I remember I told my girlfriend at the time, we're not watching this show at all until I have multiple girlfriends. <laughs> then I remember one night I was there with seven girlfriends of mine. And I said, okay, I've been saving a show to watch. And we all watched uh, The Girls Next Door. So you were there during the <laughs> recording of that. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's so awesome. What's it like being a Playboy Playmate? Do you get to date celebrities? No, it's so funny. So there's a lot of girls. So there's about 40 people that pick a Playboy Playmate because they want to make sure they're really beautiful on the inside, on the outside too, very intelligent. Um, so I was actually the only one that was in a relationship and uh, I stayed with the person I was dating the entire time. Didn't date celebrities, never cheated anything. But there are a lot of girls that want to be a Playboy Playmate because they want that celebrity. They want to get married and then be But sad. you got to see it, I'm sure, because you were part of the parties and stuff, right? Oh, yeah. So I actually lived down the street for a while, too. So I was there every Sunday. So it was, it was probably about two years. Um, I was actively there weekly. And then for years and years, still still all the events. OK. OK. So you obviously are coming at us. And I, I believe we're all as as beings. We'll have different perspectives into life, different angles. Right. And so your angle is so unique. That's what makes that's what qualifies you really to be sitting here talking to us right now, because you're coming from an angle, from a position, a perspective that is not shared by too many people. Not too many people can say, I was a Playboy Playmate. I mean, that is that is valuable information you've gathered as a being uh, having that experience, right? And so as men, there's a lot of questions we have. I'm sure as women have a lot of questions, okay? So one of those, I'm gonna start asking you a few things that, are, that I know people wanna hear here. Um, one of the things I wanna know and uh, men wanna know is when a, when a woman of your caliber or your friends, when you guys were there, and the party starts and men come in, right? And it, the gathering happens. What are some immediate cues that you pick up from a man that tells you, this is the guy I want, I wanna be with him, versus I don't want that guy, I don't want him to do it. What are some things that you see that you could say was, if you held in common with some of your, your friends at the time? So what I've seen, the guys that stand out, they don't have to be the tallest, the most attractive, the most, you know, covered in bling. It's the guy that walks in with confidence, like walks in like he owns the room. That's the guy that gets attention. That's why I think a lot of guys are too in their heads. I need more money. I need to be more this. No, you just need to walk in like I own this room. You guys are lucky to be not in, a, not in an angry way, but just know, know your worth way. And those are the guys that stand out that all the women are looking at. That's right. Now, could you you touched on it right now. Did you ever see men who came in with a lot of bling and height and looks, but you could you could sense their insecurity and weakness? Could you do that? Oh, for sure. Some yeah, a hundred percent. Like they always say, the loudest guy in the room, you know, mm. is the is the weakest. Yeah, which is not, it's not always true, but I get what you're saying. You know, we're talking about uh, some different thing, but I actually uh, butchered that quote. It's a way better quote. <laughs> no, I know, I know what you mean. Um, one of the things is uh, people understand that that uh that idea intellectually yeah i gotta be i gotta like own the room like you know we just got all the words right but the experience is different right and so we're gonna try to hack the experience from your perspective what is it that you saw about the person that made you go oh that motherfucker he he's got his shit together and i'm sure you didn't even know many times who the person was but that's what made the attraction let's go find out who this man is with all this confidence correct so for me personally, it has to be a common interest. Like if I'm with someone, I want to succeed together. I want to grow together. I want to add value to your life. So it has to be someone like, okay, you have confidence. You know, it's probably stemming from somewhere. But is there something we can do together? Then I'm going to want to know more. Right. But you don't know that in the beginning, right? So you're in a mm -hmm. room with your girlfriends, hanging out at this big party, and the guys come in, right? And this guy attracts your attention. You don't know that yet. You don't know that. You're going to go find out. So prior to you finding that out, you're registering that he has a lot of confidence. He feels like he owns the room, right? That right there. What can you tell me about his body language or the way he moves or interacts that makes you get that? Or is it just a pure instinctual feeling? I mean, that's what I want to know. I think a lot of it is instinct because like we, there could be 15 playmates in a room and 15 guys. We're all going to think a certain one's hotter or yeah. want a different, want to talk to a different guy for different reasons. Yes, yes. So, but is there is there something that, 
that um, you would all agree on. That's what we're trying to go for, for the common denominator. It's like, for example, for example, a, a, a man who acts needy and desperate is a for sure turn off by 99% of the women, right? And so we're looking now at, you said the guy has confidence, he walks in, right? And there you are, you're looking, and there's a few guys with bling, there's height, there's looks, there's whatever, and one guy stands out, right? Can you describe him to me? How does he walk? What does he do? What does he say? So a lot of times I pay attention to the women. So a lot of guys, I'll notice actually, they'll go, they hit on everyone, they'll hit on everyone, they'll hit on everyone, right? Like pick a woman that you think you may really have something in common with, spend five, 10, 15 minutes talking to her. Because even if she doesn't want you, you don't want her, all the other women are seeing, oh, that guy might be interesting. He's carrying on a conversation. He's not, you know, bouncing from woman to woman to woman. Ah, okay, okay. That's, that's a really good point. So you see uh, he's in conversation with somebody. Yeah, genuine conversation, not instantly going, I got to meet a girl, I got to meet a girl, interested in what they're saying, yeah. Maybe bring uh, a few women in, be be funny. Especially isn't a, it, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, especially a guy that can entertain a group of women. I mean, that stands out because most guys are terrified to speak to one woman. So if you can approach a group of women and be interesting, that goes a mile away. Wow. Now that, I can tell you, Christine, is some very good advice. <laughs> Do you know why, Christine? <laughs> Because I'm, I'm the number one relationship coach in the entire world. Not because I have a degree in a Christine, not because of that, but because I prove myself every day to intelligent men all across the world. I create a project where men come and live here. I live with my students and I've been living with them for three, four years. And just so they can come and observe me, go out in the world and get women of the highest caliber. And not only that, I have five girlfriends that are incredibly beautiful. And I don't lie to one, one woman or the That's what made me who I am. That's how we know each other. Okay. And what you're saying, I can guarantee you, is incredible advice. So I hope everybody heard that. Because there's going to be things that a woman says that I'm just going to say, that was pure garbage, what she just said, all right? And I'm not going to say that right now because I have respect for you. But the fact of the matter is, what you said was so valuable. And I'm going to zoom into that. So the guy, you're watching a guy interact with women. Two, three women, they're laughing. Ah, and he's, it's called running court. It's called running court. He's running court. He's doing that thing, right? And do, what goes through your mind is, hey, what, what, why don't you tell me? What goes through your mind right there? So he's got experience. I'm walking him. He's not nervous. He's got experience. Obviously, he's probably been with a collection of women because you want someone, me personally, I want someone that has experience. They've been with beautiful women. They're not going to be insecure. So you're like, okay, that guy has experience. He's probably not going to be insecure. He might, hopefully he won't go crazy on me. Okay, I'm probably going to speak to that confident well, guy. Wait, wait, back, up, back, up, back up, back up, back up. <laughs> hopefully he won't go crazy on me. Because he's had a lot of experience with beautiful women. So if it's the first time getting a pretty girl, sometimes the guys are too, you know, they, they end up smothering you because they're so afraid to lose you. But obviously, That's if he's confident, he's making all these beautiful women laugh, then, you know, he's probably going to let me be me and just appreciate that I'm a beautiful woman without trying to smother me because he's had a lot of me. Ideally. Fucking gold. <laughs> That's fucking gold again. Okay. Hey, every time I go, ching, ching. Christine, that means you just hit the fucking jackpot on those. Thank you. Great answers. Okay. Now it's interesting, Christine. Everything you say, I have taught, but it's different coming from your mouth. Do you get so it's difference? working? So I'm proof that everything yes. you're teaching is working. So I've literally been watching this for 15 years. So wow. So yeah, let's keep going. That's what and, and if there's any points of disagreement, we're gonna talk it out because we're both coming from the same perspective. We're not in disagreement on our perspective. Men, beautiful women, powerful men coming together, having a great relationship. That's the perspective. And both of them winning. So once we understand that we're both headed to the same target, then we just got to find out why you're taking that road and I'm taking this road. Or in the case we are right now, we're on the exact same road. And it's amazing because we didn't have a talk before this about what we're going to say. I'm just, I'm, I'm organically asking you the questions and the answers you're giving. I know my students, I'm watching everyone's face. Just trust me, everybody's like damn right, especially the top guys. I can see you know what you're saying, you're being honest and authentic. That's why it's working. You're telling us the truth. Thank you. Okay, moving Thank on. You. So, that yeah, so you see a guy in conversation, he, he's not going to freak out on you. He has experience with women, right? Okay, very good. Now, how important is it that he's smiling every once in a while when he's walking in the venue versus he's not smiling? Is that something you notice? You know, it's funny because you really nailed it because there's a lot of guys that go out there that actually do have wealth, but they're going out talking, you know, that they don't smile. And it's almost <laughs> like the narcissist and stuff because they're fake, but they they truly don't generally smile. It's interesting. I've never heard anyone notice that. Yeah. Oh, oh hey, listen. Woo! You have no idea. 
<laughs> what they'll I laugh know. at their own jokes, but they won't generally smile. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean a genuine smile. Okay. Next one. Next one. How important is it that a man knows how to communicate with his eyes through eye contact? Oh, so much. That's the sexiest thing on the planet. Because think about it. You could look at a woman. You're a guy, right? But And she could be like, okay, but then you make eye contact and suddenly she's stunning. Same yeah. thing for us. Right. That, so this is like, the, what this is, I think, one of the biggest secrets is it's actually in the eyes and the smile, believe it or not. And if we add one more piece to that, like we're drawing a person, I would say if you want to get a woman, we're going to start with the eyes. Forget about the rest of everything. Then we're going to put a smile. Forget about everything. Then ready? We're going to draw a spine. Straight shoulders. Conf that's, that stands for confidence. So now you have a confident man who's got a warm, genuine smile. And ready? The words, the correct words are this. He knows how to communicate with his eyes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, it's not just and then eye you can tell contact. It's learning how to transfer what I'm feeling to you through my eyes. That's the difference, right? When how many women speak and they never feel heard? So you nail nailed it. If someone's actually making eye contact, the woman's going to walk away. Wow, that's the first. I actually feel heard. He listened to me. Da, da, da. But the majority of the guys, they're just going, don't look at her boobs. Don't look at her boobs. <laughs> you know, you can almost see them doing that. But it's like for them to actually truly make contact and connect with you. I mean, think about when it was the last time very many women have truly connected with the guy. So if they see a man's yeah, like, hey, that. look at me. I'm trying to connect with you. I mean, that's priceless. So, Christine, I can't see you anymore. Where are you? Does um, I, don't I hear you, but I don't see you. Why I would have disappeared. You're fully gone. Can anybody see Christine? Just thumbs up, thumbs down. You can? I can't. Everybody can? Okay, hold on a second. No, oh, that's fair. I don't see you. Let me just go through all the squares here. Hollywood squares. There you Oh, I see why. That mm -hmm. means the third, third page got at it. So I was on two pages. That means a bunch of other people came. Okay. All right, I see you. Yeah, so uh, I'm sorry. Can you? Can you just... Uh, I, I got distracted when I couldn't find you. Rewind a little bit of what you said. I was I basically saying how genius you are. No. Oh, oh, but okay. I was... <laughs> All right, thank you. So I yeah. was actually just truly saying how you really nailed it with eye contact because so many women never feel heard. So if you meet a guy and for the first time he's really truly trying to look you in the eye, make contact, eye contact, you might go, wow, this guy knows something all these other guys don't. He's ballsy enough to really look me in the eye, look me in the soul, not just you know, hear me spew stuff, you know, trying to get my number later. He's really trying beautiful. to connect. That's priceless. Beautiful, beautiful. We're on the same track. Now, we're going to continue this line, Christine. You said two things. I'm going to move forward. One, how important is it, Christine, that, and maybe you haven't looked at it, but we're looking at it for the first time. In that conversation with a good smile, good eye contact, right, that he asks you certain things about you that show a deeper perspective of him trying to find out about you is that important in conversation or not definitely because it shows okay i met this girl i might be interested in a date let me get to know more about her to see if we can truly connect rather than she's just a pretty face good so what are some questions that would kind of signal that what what you know uh like a person who has no experience right they go okay that sounds good so i can see them talking to a girl and they be like, okay i gotta ask her something and then asking something completely wrong so what are, what are some good ideas to get to know a, a, a female of beauty? What are some questions that would make you go, wow, that was a, hmm, I, I like how you asked me that, like black, that kind of feeling I'm looking for. Like, oh, well, that was different. That. You know, it's funny, something, and I never thought of this before, you and I speaking, something that would really interest me if a guy came up and was like, hey, I'm really looking to, uh, you know, date someone with similar interests, somewhere we could grow together. What what makes you happiest? What are your interests? Because then it shows I'm not looking just to find a wife to make me dinner. I'm looking to find someone I can truly go together. I think girls would be like, oh, my God, like I've never heard that before. That's nice. Now, I hear that and I hear the structure and me as an artist, right? I can now take that structure and put beautiful words on it so it comes out smoother. Because what I wouldn't say to a woman is, Hi, I'm, I'm looking to date and I just want to know if we have the same interests. You know what right I mean? Right off the bat, that sounded a bit crazy. Yeah, we got to word that right. together. <laughs> you get that, but you understand that. So yeah. now, but, 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 but I got the concept. So let me try to put it into words if I was speaking to you, right? I would say something like this. Um, I would first tell you why I'm here. I'm here because my, my brother, Mo Rocks from Los Angeles Tribune, you know, he's a really dear friend of mine. He invited me and um, we're just enjoying blah, this and that. And I see you're working here right now. 
what do you enjoy doing outside of here? What are some activities that, you know, like if you had all the time in the world, you could vacation anywhere, where would you go and what would you do? Something like that. Is that the type of question that we're talking about? I think perfect. Plus it gets your, it gets her in this different frame of mind because it's she's not thinking work. She's thinking, oh my, the, my dream world, what I love to do. So you've got her in a different place too because she's thinking about all the things she enjoys while she's talking to you. That's it. That's the secret, everyone. Christine, that's the secret. When I speak to a woman, no matter where we are, in a five-minute conversation, we're transported to another world. We're not there anymore. I don't want to be around 300 people having a conversation with, you know, your playmate uh, friend. You know, I'm going to take her. I'm going to be like, Christine, thank you for introducing me. Her and I are going to go travel the galaxy. We'll be right back. Five minutes. And then through words and questions, we're going to go to a place. Like, for example, if you could travel anywhere. Well, is there a site you want to see? Have you been to the pyramids? Have you seen the Egyptian pyramids? What about the Eiffel Tower? Have you been to the uh, Statue of Liberty? Have you walked it? Like, uh, have you touched the Hollywood sign? Different things like that, depending. And what, like you said, it takes her mind and puts her in another world. And that's important, isn't it? Oh, definitely. And two, and take notes. Like if you think it's a girl you're going to see again, because that's prices. If you meet a girl and you ask questions and you actually remember what she says the next day, a million points. Even if you take notes and she finds out, she'll still care that you that you cared enough to actually take notes about her. <laughs> yeah, it really. Yeah. Once you understand the basic. OK, so that, great for saying that, because. The next thing you, you had said, which was I was literally just walking, I was walking my girlfriend to the car to come up to teach. And it was like, this shit downloads to me. Don't know from where, but it's that's how I know what I know, right? And so this was coming to me. And you mentioned uh, the word that was like really like a deep teaching for me. Okay, so I'd like to now go into a little teaching. And we're going to go right into what you said. The teaching is this, everybody. And that's exactly what I did in the beginning of class. The way I started the class was the actual application of what I'm going to teach right now, which was, as human beings, I realized we really seek connection on the deepest level. And so when we started the class, what did I say? Remember that little spill that I did, a little monologue? It connected me to everybody. I don't care if you are black, you are white, orange, purple, tall, short, poor, rich, fat, ugly, no one gives a fuck. I, I describe my spiritual experience to you and what it's like to be a spiritual being. And I know somewhere in there, my words were also your words and we were connected. And so the connection, I believe this is what, my, my every weekend, Christine, my job is to go out with my students and practice and apply all the stuff that I've been learning all week through God or aliens or angels. I don't know who it is. It's a higher consciousness than me without a doubt, though. OK, and so I change every week. My whole character changes. The way we live is called the AZD process. That's my name. Right. That's what everybody's here for. We live a certain way that changes our character and refines it more into what we want to be as men. Then on the weekend, because it's one thing to just sit in your own world of fantasy and go, I'm cooler. But on the weekend, we actually go out into high level venues and interact with high level people. And we see if our theories work or not. Right. That's what makes me who I am to sit here and talk to you because I'm in the battlefield every fucking day. I'm still a playmate and I'm still in the fucking parties no matter what. Right. And I'm that motherfucker. So why am I telling you that? Because the connection that I, I realize that we seek with each other is really why everybody is even interacting, guys. That's what sex is. It's a total physical connection. I go inside of the woman and she receives me. Inside, and for a moment, we move in unison. Right? As Bruce Lee said, when, when she expands, I contract. When I contract, she expands. And when, that's literally sex. Imagine if you both expanded together, you bumping bellies against each other or something. <laughs> so, so the idea is uh, our connection. And now I'm going to ask you some questions. A guy could be, here's my theory. A guy could be very attractive, uh, very well off, all those resources. But a woman of the highest caliber, which is what I go for, the woman who could have those guys, right? He's still just an option. He's not that extraordinary because there's another rap star who's going to want her and another rap star who's going to want her or another movie director, right? However, when she finds that guy and she feels a connection, I believe at that moment, she actually can't even see the other guys anymore. And she, she focuses uh, something inside of her and zooms in on him tighter. Can you tell me about that, if that's right, wrong, or how you experience that in any no, way? 
A million percent. Cause it's like, if you're in a relationship, like the right kind, like you really kind of belong to someone. So no one else exists. Like you said, like, if you're right, like you think about like, you know, if you're out of the store, you're like, oh, maybe I should grab this. Will you like this? Yeah. You're basically thinking about them 24 hours a day. No one else exists in the right now, relationship. This, here, Christine, now I'm going to teach something about men. Men and women don't have that in common. And that's why men can't understand that. And I'm, I'm understanding that now, right? One of my girlfriends is a extremely high level uh, dancer, stripper, right? She's like, she's the top of the world style. So she gets to mix with all the celebrities, goes everywhere, all that, right? But what's interesting is I feel 100% secure about her in a way that I can't explain to others, but it's because I can, I, I can perceive what you said, that when a woman feels that she belongs to somebody, feels she's connected to him, she actually doesn't have eyes for others, but men were designed differently. We can feel 100% connected to each other, like 1 million percent, but I can still be with another woman. And that's just the way God created the game of life. And this is where men and women misunderstand each other. She looks at him and says, if you love me, why would you want to be with another woman? And he says, hey, I do love you. Trust me. It's not that I want to be with another woman. It's the way I treat you and take care of you. That should let you know. Because I could be with a hundred women and not give a fuck about any of them. Literally, I could have sex with a hundred women and not even think about them ever again for the rest of my life. I'm designed differently. But if I have sex with you and then I want to take care of you and I think about you and I wonder if you've eaten today, if you're okay, if you're protected. Now God has put in me that thing that tells me you're my mate. We're different now. So that's how I as a man experience love, not just by my dick for you. There's no way. On the other hand, I believe the woman, and, and again, you could correct me if I'm wrong, you know, I believe the woman, when she does feel that connection, her vagina kind of shuts off to everybody else. Even her eyes shut off. She won't even see. Like, she'll be like, oh, yeah, he's cute. And oh, my God, girl, she's so, he's this, he's that. Yeah, he's cute. But her biology doesn't trigger anymore. Okay, can you tell us about this right, wrong, or how you feel about it? Yeah, no, 100%. Like, I'll actually get angry. Like, if someone knows the person I'm in a relationship and they hit on me, I'll get angry because they're disrespecting me. They're just dis disrespecting the person I'm with. So I agree with you 100%. It's it's the connection. And then, yeah, it's, it's the respect. Good. And if you truly belong to someone, you're not going to let anyone hit on you. Good. And then when you feel the connection, where do you feel the connection? You know, it's weird. I think it's almost like an otherworldly thing. When you meet someone, you know, like you can see someone and you don't know anything about them, but you know, okay, there's something, something's happening here and you cannot yeah. do anything about what they do for a living or literally anything about them, but you can just feel that energy. Okay. Something's happening here. I need to speak to you. I need to know more. Why am yes. I feeling something? Yes. And something that I go off of Christine is I, if I don't feel that no matter what the scene looks like, I actually won't talk to the girl. But when I do feel that, it doesn't matter if she has 900 guys around her, if she has a sign that says, please don't approach me, mm -hmm. right? Because I feel energetically, she's already calling me over to her. And I really, and it's worked for me 100% of the time. You know, I've, I've literally walked up to girls this was a couple of weeks ago and she said, what made you decide to come talk to me? I said, because when you looked at me from far away, I saw something in your eyes and it was undeniable. I, and I said to her, did you feel that or not? And she paused. I said, did you? You did, right? I said it was just one moment. In one moment, I knew that it didn't matter. I was going to talk to you. Have you experienced the moment where you look at someone, you go, I know I'm going to talk to this person. Oh, yeah. Every person. And, and I'll click. And if I feel energy with someone, we're just in it for life. I only trust energy. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Well, and think that about it because you can meet someone and they could be because so many people want to focus on money or where they're at in life, but you can meet someone who just lost it all da, 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 but this is a person six months from now, you're going to see succeed with for life. But if you're looking at where they're at right now, and you're not focused on that energy, you could really mess up the, you know, the way your, your, the path of your life is supposed to go. Right. Right. How important is it that a man um, is not emotional to you? Say that again. How important is it to you that a man is not emotional an what do you mean by emotional? An emotional man would be a man who needs you to feel good about himself and he's seeking his mother in a relationship, not a wife. Oh, yeah. No, I couldn't handle that. Like, I need someone because it's like, I love being alone. So if you can make my life better, then I want to be in a relationship with you. But if you're going to be needy and it's like, stress me out, then yeah, I'm just going to be over here by myself, enjoying eating by myself. Okay. And I, I, I've come to realize that Let's let's say when I say woman of value, I'm talking about Playboy Playmates. I would say 90% or above share of that view that you have, correct? 
Yeah. Oh, for sure. Well, because they want to succeed. They're trying to, they, a lot of them are very passionate about charities. They want to constantly grow and you can't grow when you're dragging someone to babysitting them. Yeah. We have a word here that's called grow. And every time someone says it, we all hear in our head, this little sentence that goes, I grow, you grow, we grow, Negro. Okay. Because in my class, we could say black, white, orange, purple. We can say whatever. We are politically incorrect, Christine. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. We're a bunch well, of- Well, you're smart enough. We're all souls. We're all we're, souls we're in men. all different bodies. <laughs> we're men. Do you want to go hang out in the locker room when the men are pussies? Because I wouldn't even go there if I were you, okay? This is a real locker room here, all right? We <laughs> grab women's vaginas here. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Christine, I know you're limited on time, but a few things. One is I'm seeing a lot of positive comments. Guys, starting, here's how it's going to go. Christine and I are working on a, a major program, like a, like a university that comes to this stuff, okay? And with it is going to be like the ability to meet Playboy models. She has a lot of friends that are Playboy models. To interact with them, uh, to interact with them through social media and live. But the next thing we're working on is we're going to do an event next month. It's going to be a workshop. It's Bad Boy and Playboy put together, okay? And it's going to be her and I. All I can tell you about it right now is that it'll be one day workshop and we're going to go over things like this, but it's going to be structured on exactly what I'm going to ask is I'm going to ask you guys your questions and based on your questions, we're going to formulate a structured class for it. Okay. And you guys can see how this conversation go on and on and on and on. Of course, it'll be limited space. And of course, if you're broke as a joke, don't even think about it right now. Okay. But you have some time to go work and, and do whatever you got to do. All right. So think about that coming up. Um, Christine, you've got 10 more minutes. Okay. Is that good? Yeah. 10 more minutes. Okay. So let, let me, let me put it in your hands. Um, if a guy wanted to date a playboy model, playboy playmate, right? He was one of your friends, right? You run into a friend or a cousin or something. You really want to help the motherfucker out. And you go, look, I'm inviting you to, to the, to the mansion. There's going to be a lot of girls there, but there's a few things we're going to go over right now. Ready? You're about to give a makeover. So physically, He's just an average looking guy, right? He's not ugly and he's not super handsome. Just an average fucking Abercrombie looking motherfucker. So you're looking at the guy and you say, okay, so first of all, when I'm looking at you, let's start head to toe, face. What advice would you give him for his face to make him like more attractive to your friends in that mansion? Definitely well shaved. Like if you're trying to, because people want to kind of get a, a, a basic look of your face, like your your eyes, your structure, everything. Some guys go too crazy with the beards. Mm -hmm. So we, we call that well-groomed. Yeah, right? well-groomed. Yeah. Because you don't want to get lost when you're trying to kiss a guy. You want to be able to get your hands back. <laughs> yeah, no, hey, no nose hairs, no eyebrows fucked up. Like just yeah. clean, like get a fucking haircut or something before you show up to the party. Everybody got that? That's the head. All right, now. We're going to go down and he's, it's going to be his, his dress and women have different styles. So it's, it's not fair. Some guy goes like gangster, some goes like businessman, whatever. Right. But there are some things I think most can agree upon. What advice would you give your friend or cousin about dress like this when you show up? What would you say? You nailed it. Some type of style. Like even if it's just a, a suit party, black tie, you have to have some type of style that shows who you are. Cause that's the guys that stand out. The, hey. the guys that there's a million suit guys and suits in the room, but someone it can show that style that makes them stand out from all the rest. That's very nice. Everybody get that? Okay, perfect. Okay, so now um, that's the outfit. And you say, okay, good. Now you're coming in and there's a few pointers I want to give you. When you first come in, don't ABC. Is there anything that he shouldn't do? That, that you'd be like, that, that, none of them would even look at you if he did that after you walked in. Yeah. If you, yeah, if you want an actual Playboy play me like an intelligent one woman that's going to be behind your back, like ride or die, don't go in thinking you can insult women. Like a lot of guys think they can go to the bar and insult, you know, we, we walk away, we turn and walk away. Like, <laughs> can you give us some of those insults? Some of some of those insults you heard? Just literally anything. How the guys will try and come up and that, that secondhand insult or like, you know what I mean? Where they think, oh, if I insult this girl, she'll be interested in me more. Like a, a woman of power, of an intelligence that's getting somewhere. If you try and insult her thinking, oh, well, now that you've insulted me, I want to talk to you. They'll literally, I don't even think would reply. They would just turn and walk away. They would. Okay. Now let me clear that up for, for you also. Um, when you say the second hand insult, this is something in the game that's called a neg. Now the problem is it's nobody understands it. Okay. Now let me, let me tell you how it's done properly. And you can tell me what it is. It's not a insult. You should never insult. In fact, the rule is when you're out in social dynamics, you should never insult anyone, even your enemy. 
Because the moment you insult somebody, you get the environment against you in the social dynamics. And you don't want that, okay? So it's not an insult. What it is, though, Christine, when it's done properly, the advice I would give your cousin, because we're both advising him. I say, okay, listen, here, cuz, here's what you got to do. Don't go in there looking at her and talking to her like you want to have sex with her. You have to get rid of that completely. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to communicate to her that at least, at least right now, that's not your mindset tonight. Tonight, that's not the head headspace you're in, whatever reason that is. So let me give you some, one of my reasons for an example, Christine. I have five girlfriends that are so beautiful. The last thing I need, Christine, is one of your fucking friends to want to be my girlfriend. All right? So I'm not here for that tonight. Right? And, but I'm not <laughs> disrespecting anybody, but like, hi, nice to meet you. Yeah. Oh, well, listen, uh, I'm, my girlfriends are at home and I'm just here just have a good time. Well, what's your name? How are you? You look beautiful. Blah. Now, now that I have disqualified myself, as a potential see, see that's different and two different things yeah that's different and genius exactly. <laughs> i'm clearing that up for everybody to understand because that's what a neg is it's not a negative compliment that some idiot made that shit up it's this it's that i'm not available right now or it could even be this it could be i don't even have a girlfriend but let me give you a few of them the guy's gay <laughs> right <laughs> she opens up and now you're gonna have a great interaction with him it's when she feels he's talking to me because he wants to have sex with me that we're, we're going to kill that dynamic from the beginning. I would tell your cousin, you're going in there with the attitude that tonight fucking is not the headspace for you. You're here for some other shit and you're going to interact like that. Right. And you would agree with that. Yes. Oh, no, 100 percent. Yeah. Let's just say I'm talking to five guys. Right. Four, yeah. I could tell they're wanting to sleep with me. The other guys, eh, you know, I have a wife. I'm not here to be here. At the very least, I'm going to want to talk to this guy because I know he's not going to want to hit on me. And then, he's, you know, my defenses are down. I'm like, okay, I'm safe. I'm going to talk to you. And then he'll probably be funny. Da -da. My defenses are down. He'll probably get in quicker. So what you're saying is genius. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You got it. 100%. That's, hey, that's called the game. And watch. That's designed for women of quality like you. Because you already know the guy's thinking sex. There's no doubt about it. And so even when he comes up and is rude to you, it just shows that he doesn't get women like you. That's all it shows. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, and it's perfect because when they act like that, they're polite. And, oh, I'm not interested. But then it's like, okay, I, you probably get me all the time. You're not interested. Like, yeah, it, it's it's genius. Oh, it's genius. That's beautiful. That's from history. <laughs> That's the person who taught me that. Okay, good. So now you say, okay, now you've got your don't. Now you're going to do your do's. All right. Here's what you're going to do, cousin. You're going to go in there and you're going to, what do you got to say? Give him some advice. I think generally, like you're saying, ask questions, or even if you if you're nervous and put them in your phone, but questions that generally, like you said, bring go along with your advice. Bring women to our happier place. Talk about their favorite vacation, what they wanted to be, truly wanted to be as a little girl when they grow up. Where are they now? Do they think they're going to get close? But just yeah, people that take them out of different times, stress free zones, remind them of a, when they were a different person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Isn't that funny? Remind them of their different person. We already know everyone's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, save me from who I am right now, please, sir. <laughs> I know I look beautiful. I got everything going for me, but can you take me out of my hell for five minutes? And now it leads us to what I really believe, and we'll end it with this, Christine, and we'll pick this up in our event. Okay. We'll just kind of touch on it because I believe it might be the most important quality in, in a man woman relationship especially a woman of quality. And it's something that might even be resisted by the world these days, okay? But the world's been brainwashed. So here's how it goes. He has to demonstrate the ability to lead her. I believe when she realizes, oh my God, here is a man who's not gonna fall for my bullshit, not far, fall for my chaos. That the problems I have, he's already bested those in himself. He's free of my hell. And he has a way for me to be like him. I believe she has to look at him and say, I want to be like this guy. I believe once that's communicated, we put together the dynamic of nature and God, where she, no matter how beautiful she is, she goes, I need to talk to him, actually. Because everybody else I can manipulate with my looks and my emotions. But this motherfucker will, will tell me when it's right, will tell me when it's wrong, and take me to a place that clearly I want to go because he's there himself. I'm not a guinea pig. He's done the work. I can see the work I need to do on me in him. Hallelujah. I'm going to pass it to you, Christine. What do you think? See, you just said what I've never heard before. And, and it's, it's absolute genius. <laughs> no, people, people don't understand that. Tell, tell us about it from your perspective. I know 100% this is true. 
So you now now let's hear you say it because it's yeah, more so, real yeah, so like, yeah, like if I meet someone, like I'm saying, like if I'm confident in my life, I know I can get somewhere. But if I know that there's someone that can lead me, that can guide me in a whole new world that I've never been, then yeah, let me take some stress off your back. When you get home, hey, you brought me all the, in this whole world I never thought I'd be. When you come, hi, I'm dressed up. I'm going to have a smile on my face. Like you're saying, maybe all my five girlfriends, not that's not really my thing. But you know what I mean? You want to say, hey, you lead in me, you guide me. What can I do to make your life easier now that you led me somewhere that I never oh. thought I'd be without you? So I love I everything you're Persian. saying. <laughs> I right now I became Persian again because I'm Persian. What was that? You know what I did? This is, I did this. So what happened? That was like poetry to me, Christine. <laughs> I became Rumi. I became Hafez. I became my grandpa who was a poet. <laughs> and I just listened to that. That was so nice. I wish I could repeat that. I'm going to probably take that and cut it out and drive and listen to it because that's what I know. And I believe that's the bottom line for the most beautiful women on the planet. Okay, I'm gonna show you something, Christine. Are you ready? I am ready. I don't know if you could see from there. I hope you can. <sighs> Obviously, I wasn't prepared for this part. Life's the most fun when you're never prepared. <laughs> yeah. These are my three girlfriends that uh, are most consistent here. Oh, Dang. But, but, yeah. Okay. No, no, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, you have no idea. Hold on. That's what I'm trying to. I'm trying to show you. Can I give you like a real honest like applaud from a Playboy Playmate? Because those <laughs> ladies are pretty. Here's one of them. Damn. Okay, you have really good taste, by the way. They are stunning. Oh, and I do have to salute you because I love that you're honest. Because that's what made Hef a true God is that he's honest with women. He's like, hey, this is the type of lifestyle. This is what I want. This is what I'll provide. And if you would like to jump in, get ready for a good time. And that's what you're doing. That's 100% true, right? Oh, so one. beautiful. Wow. Okay, we're hanging out. I, I wanted to hang out with you just because I knew you were awesome personally, but damn, you keep ladies like that around. <laughs> you have no idea. Hold on. There's more. Here's the third one. Okay, yeah, you would kajillion percent practice what you preach. You got not one, not two, not three, but yeah, those ladies are beautiful. That's you know three. Hold on. We're not done. I, I would like you to see all of them. Okay? And because uh, I'm going to tell them that you were very complimentary. Because I think you do, I think you understand beauty, and I think that that's lost in today's world, right? We don't we don't see uh, people appreciate beautiful women anymore, and that's very sad for me because I spend my entire life understanding how important it is to be a certain type of man to attract the most beautiful women on the planet, and now they're walking around pretending like it doesn't fucking matter uh, what a woman looks like. Get out of here, dude! I don't even want to hear that shit anymore. Oh my god, where's the other one? Can't even find it. Yeah, you're really the first to know the connection, yeah. like everything, really... all the ways you really get and keep a beautiful woman like you're showing. Yeah. This wow. Is the fourth one. Okay. And then, um, anyway, see, I hope but... these men appreciate that they're actually, you take time out of your day to speak to them. Cause if I were you, I would never be out of bed. <laughs> I'd be with those girls 24 hours a day. You want to know, you, you want to know a secret, Christine? You want to know a secret? I'm actually, as much as I enjoy sex and I love sex. For me, it's not actually the highest sensation of my life. I, the sensation of creating or deep conversation or going out and testing these theories or really connecting to the universal consciousness is so much more that when I have sex, I channel that feeling to my sex to make my sex better. I don't lose myself in sex. And I believe that's one of my ultimate powers. In fact, yeah, now we're adults, obviously talking as adults. I actually can't get aroused by a woman, no matter how beautiful she is, and it just happened last weekend. Last weekend, I had a girl visit me, very beautiful. And uh, she was not acting right at some point. And then the next day I went to see her. And of course, we had our clothes off at some point. And my penis wasn't working. And it wasn't working. No matter what she fucking did, it wasn't fucking working. And then I stopped her. I said, I don't feel a connection here and here. I said, the way you acted last night disconnected something. That's why I'm here this morning at 7.30 a.m. Just to make sure, because if you leave on that, we'll never talk again. I said, so just relax, lay down. Let's just talk. We're talking, selling my dick, it's hard. And I used to think, I used to think that I had a problem because in high school, I had no role models, right? And I'm realizing like, I can actually get turned on off of a conversation that's loving and deeply connected versus I've had women put my flaccid dick in their mouth and try to suck it like a little peanut and it's not even working. Like what the fuck, right? And I just think there was something wrong with me. But then I realized it's just the way I work. And it actually, for me, this mutation helps me get with beautiful women. 
because I don't have this overtly sexual energy. When I see them, I have this excited, connected energy. Like, like I said, like, look at how beautiful you are. Like, what's it like being you? I can only imagine. Life has got to be so different from your perspective, pumping gas, getting groceries, being approached. Like, have you been heartbroken? I have like, I find that shit so fascinating that as that conversation builds, suddenly we were closer physically even, and then closer. And now you look into each other's eyes and you start to imagine things. And then, and now, okay, now we're going to fuck. But if a girlfriend of mine ever, and it's happened, just suddenly takes off their clothes and I look at them and I'm like, what are you doing, National Geographic special? What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> like, that doesn't turn me on. And one of my girlfriends recently discovered this. She discovered this about two weeks ago or something, right? And I was like, because we're watching some TV show and then she's like, well, you don't think my naked body looks good? I said, it looks beautiful, but like when you take off your clothes at the right time, I don't want to see you fucking walking around me serving tea naked and shit that doesn't do it for me there's got to be a connection anyway went too far in this no i um, think you get it because i'm hearing everything you're saying because it's a true energy exchange it's a true connection and an exchange that's what turns you on is the interaction with that person it's not just a true physical sex act it's looking in the eye it's having that connections it's it's the exchange the true exchange of energy yeah. it's truly being inside someone that you're connecting with so absolutely. if you don't have that it's just skin hitting skin so i hear everything you're saying absolutely so i have right now justine i have five of those women that i have sex with every week Right. I have to, of course, somehow keep myself ready for that. Sometimes it's twice a day. What else should I got to do? But then, <laughs> outside of of that, but then outside of that, I'm also having sex with about three other women. And I go out collecting like exotic birds, you know, beautiful creatures like unicorns and dragons. I'm like that mythical creature that I'm that friend that when you come over, I'm like, look, look at what I found in the land of unicorns, the clean unicorn. And look, she can go anywhere she wants. She chooses to graze here. She could have anything she wants. She chooses to call me her man. That right there is the most exciting part of my life outside of trying to figure out what, what happens after life and death. The next thing is that. That is so exciting that I've dedicated my entire life to. I can't even take it anymore. Right. It's possessed my soul, Christine. Well, think about it. So you're actually creating something. And back in the day when we had kings, they had multiple, multiple wives because they actually needed multiple, multiple wives to get out there and get their mission ac accomplished. So it's, it's, I, I think it's the same thing as, you know, back then. You need What's a lot of women. To get I, I just out realized what is your perspective of men with multiple women? Obviously, you know, have. So uh, well, tell us, tell us how you process that. Should a man with multiple women? If so, how? If not, like, what's your perspective of this? So I think if they're, if I think the main thing is honestly, like these guys that get out and cheat, I think it's wrong. Like you have to be honest with people, but if it works for someone, like it's like, I'm very, very busy. Like, I don't think I would be, so I never worried about being married or anything. I'm, I'm always busy in my own life, but let's just say hypothetically, I got married. I don't think I'd complain if I had two extra wives. I need help with cooking and cleaning. I'm busy. I need stuff. Sometimes I'm tired. If I'm tired, I don't want my husband to go without if he wants to have sex and have sex with wife number two. So, you know, I honestly, if I was that busy, I think it would make people's lives easier, especially if everyone knows their place, everyone knows their roles. There's no jealousy. Threaten me with a good time. So especially Man, that you're totally honest. I love it. So you got it. hundred percent. Now, what do you think about women that go, I would never with my husband. I would never. What do you think about? I think it's kind of, I, so that's what's hard for me with marriage. So think about it. if you're 20 to 30, you're an entirely different person. If you're 30 to 40, you're an entirely different person. A lot of what makes who you are is going out and dating and having experiences. So I think a lot of times if you're, if you're with someone in your, in a long-term relationship, I don't think it's hurtful to go, Hey, I don't want to cheat on you. I want to go out and experience. I still love you, but I feel as a person, I was a person before I met you. I feel I need to experience these things. Let's have an open relationship. I want to go out and date. If we feel it doesn't work, maybe we can call it quits or maybe we can stop it. But I feel I need this. I think you should do it. I think it's like good for people if they're in a long term. It's better than cheating. It's better to be honest. And who knows? Maybe they have fun. Maybe they have a great relationship. They can go off and travel with their separate partners. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. And then what about the women that go, my, if my boyfriend even looks at another girl, do, do you think they're, I think they're lying. That's the thing, Christine. I've never, like one of the things that happens is when I meet a woman, it's a line. I can predict everything they say before they say it half the time, right? And one of the lines I have to hear all the time is this, well, I mean, I'm glad it works for you, but I could never be with a guy who has four girlfriends. Next thing you know, this is girlfriend number five talking to me, right? <laughs> then it's like girlfriend number six will say, five girlfriends, oh my God. If my boyfriend ever, that's girlfriend number six. In fact, the moment they tell me that shit, I already know they're about to be my girlfriend because that's what, <laughs> that is like the, the one barrier that is so easy to overcome. 
And that's why I don't believe a woman. I believe that if a man displays himself to be of what you just said, kingly stature, just as a as a term so we can understand what we're talking about, right? A man of kingly stature, she is designed to see that in him. And in fact, like in my situation, it would be so wrong if I was with one woman. It would be a violation of God or something. Like the people would have to come and, and, and take my temperature and say, what are you doing with all the wisdom and power and what you... You could make so many people better with just one word. Women glow under your command. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You must be under a black enchantment. What's going on with you? So I don't believe these girls. I believe that what they want is they want a man they can control because they're insecure themselves. They're not looking for a real man. They're looking for a beta bitch. We call it baby, 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 what's it? Beta baby bottle bitch, some shit like that. And, and, <laughs> And that's what they want. So when they see a man like me, they attack and resist because if I'm right in what I say, then men are going to be like, well, what am I fucking acting like a little bitch for all the time? You know what I mean? And, and so they have to attack me. So this is how I've polarized my world, right? There's the people who just think I'm the devil and there's people who think I'm an angel. And I'm neither. I'm just a fucking guy just doing what a fucking guy does. They but you're doing it the perfect way because you have a connection with all these women. You're not just out there sleeping with a bunch of women like, oh, you're pretty, you're pretty, you're pretty. I haven't had sex with a blonde in the last few hours. I can't even you're do like it. finding people that you're truly connecting with. So it's totally different. And it's nice that you're inspiring all these guys. You're inspiring all these guys going, hey, I can't get one. Well, look at me. I've got yeah. however many and look how beautiful they are. If you can do it, I can do it too. You just got to get the inner confidence like I do and know yeah. what you bring to these women. Yeah, something to to clarify here for my class, because there's a lot of coaches online, but my class is very unique in, in the in the perspective of who comes here and who I allow here. My students are not are the guys who don't get girls. I go for the guys who actually are very successful at getting women. They're married, they have girlfriends, or they have girlfriends, they're cheating on them, or they're high-level entrepreneurs. That, that's my clientele are the men who get women, who I turn to them and say, you're still a pussy. You're, you're literally still a pussy. You could be a UFC champion, bro. You're a pussy because you don't know how to deal with women. You could be a, a multi-billionaire. She owns you, you motherfucker. Go fucking break up with the bitch right now. Tell her to take the fucking kid and run. Go, ho. I'm done with this shit. So the, 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 the people that I teach are the people that I look at their lives and I go, you're miserable because you're a man who's successful in quotes and know how to get women, but boy, you're a bitch, aren't you? And that's why they come to me is because and that's why you're here because only the highest level women are going to be here. Right. We don't give a fuck about the fucking roly poly bitch down the fucking street that nobody wants to talk to Miss Rosa or whatever the fuck it is. We're looking at the girl in the magazine, in the movies, the one who says I should be with a king. That's the one I want to talk to. The one who knows she should be with a king knows that if her king says, baby, it's just you. Baby, it's just you. Baby, I couldn't stop thinking about you. Baby, today, all I thought about was you. She's like, ew, what the fuck? What, you killed the king, huh? Imposter, imposter. <laughs> my husband would never be this. Find the real king. This man killed my husband. I would never get with a bitch. You gotta be busy running your kingdom, motherfucker. That when you have one thought about me, I know how precious that thought is. Instead of all day you're thinking about me, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know how many girls are like you? Are you okay? Let me double check. Why am I with you when nobody wants to be with you? Have you thought about that? You want to be with a man nobody wants? Do you, Christine? Are you listening to me? Or do no, you I'm definitely listening. No, it's funny. Me personally, um, I, um, so I, I haven't dated that many guys, but I wanted to date someone that dated a lot of women because I want to make sure like, they know what they don't want. They know what they do want. I don't exactly. want to be like the... I don't even want to call it the guinea pig for relationships. I want you, you to know what you want when you get to me. <laughs> That's right. And when you see that, like I told you, I said, Christine, tell all your friends, AZ motherfucking D is coming. Right? I said, don't come here alone. Uh, bring a friend. Now that you saw my pictures with my girlfriends, you have more to bat for me with, right? Trust me. He knows how to be with beautiful women. Probably prettier than you, bitch, to be honest. Okay? But he, does, he wants to meet you. So it makes a difference that a man is with quality women and shows it. Don't hide it, right? Show it, right? Hello? Show it? Yeah, no, yeah, you definitely know. Yeah, you gotta you gotta show everyone those ladies. I was just pausing because I did a mental picture. No, you nailed it. And that's what I love, but you could tell that they're also smart. They have like their own inner style. They're not just pretty. They all stand out in all different ways too. Beautiful. And what was the mental picture you were having? 
of of you or the women? You said you were having a mental picture. Oh, oh just the ladies. They were just so pretty because they're so uniquely beautiful. Because a lot of times you can see 10 blondes, right? And they all kind of look the same. But the girls that you have are all very uniquely beautiful, which is nice. Yeah. And not only that, do you know what their jobs are? They all, mm -hmm. they all work for me and they all teach women about either fitness, beauty, uh, yoga, mindset. They're all coaches, uh, uh, mental and, and physical coaches. That's all they do. Oh, nice. You can tell that in their presence, like in the, in the, in the, in the pictures, they have a very powerful like mm -hmm. presence. You can see that they're there. They're owning their presence. They're owning their space. I love it. Cause you can tell that just by the quick pictures. Yes. And you're, you're demonstrating something that I want everyone to see women of, of quality, all women, but especially to be at the level you are, you've had to, you've had to navigate this life with beauty. It's a, it's a very, it's such a high level quality that a piece of art is actually a priceless piece, right? Like there's nothing else in the world they even put a price on human human life, but they can't put price on art. It's like, it, it depends who's buying it. They'll pay for, forever for it, right? They auction it. And so as a woman of beauty, you've experienced life differently. And that's what people don't understand. You may not even know it. Like your experience was unique, right? Everywhere you went, doors must have opened. Everything is like, yes, 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 yes. All around, right? It's not how people are living. And it's important to recognize that women of, of that caliber, that we're talking about right now it's so important for them to find the man that they can admire right i mean how how important is the admiration and respect before you can get with a guy no you nailed it admire if you can find someone that you actually admire and respect yeah i mean into like if i'm in a relationship with someone like yeah it has to be someone i admire i respect i appreciate their mission like i want to know that every day we are together. How can I make your life better? Now, I'm, I'm not going to be bitching, nagging. I'm like, hey, today we're together. You're out there kicking ass. What can I do to make your life easier You know, in the house? Because every day you're out doing everything you can to make my life safe, to make my life easy. So what can I do inside the house now to make your life better? Excellent. What do you think of men that don't work? I mean, I guess it depends if you have kids or something. That kind of nails the thing. Like, It, it changes it. If, they if don't have kids. Yeah, I feel no. I mean, you got to get out there and take care of your wife. Like, what if something happens? Like, and plus, no, no, you... it's just a man. He's a bachelor. He doesn't work. He doesn't have a job. What do you think? How does he survive? <laughs> Gets by. Does, <laughs> no, he stand, does he stand a chance at all? No, I need someone that actually has goals that is driving. Even if they're struggling today, it doesn't matter. I need to see that in 10 years, you're going to be he's... something big because your dreams are what right if there. He's really good looking. Yeah, no, don't care. It's funny. The looks yeah. have actually been the least thing. Like you said, you have to have the connection. You have everything. Actually, least is, is, looks have been the the, yeah. the last thing on my it's list. It's the lowest bottom on the ladder. Yeah, yeah. People don't know that because men are the opposite. We look, we go for looks first, right? Because men are a lot more visual too. They're more yeah. attracted. They want to, and, and they're different. They want to procreate. It's in their yeah. nature to get out there yeah. and procreate with as many as they can. Where we are supposed to be playing more no defense. <laughs> yeah, totally. You got it. That's right. You should be playing defense. <laughs> <laughs> women should be defense and women should be offense. You got it. <laughs> okay. And so what about a, a, a man who lives with his mom? Is he like going to work, struggling, something like saving up college? I don't all know. That? Does that make a difference for you? <laughs> well, I mean, at the age, at the age I'm at, yeah, like it wouldn't work. But I think if someone's like literally they're smart, they're saving up, they know they're going to go somewhere, they know they're going to go to college, they're busy, they're in school 10 days a day, they come back to crash. Like, it's kind of different because everyone has to do what they need to do to get to be somewhere. Right. But would that but, be a man? I know you said not at, at the age right now, but it doesn't even matter. Okay. Let me tell you what I think. I think a man who lives with his mom is never going to date a high value woman. He's just not. Because she's going to be like, why are you there? We, and two, and kids, they're going to be terrified. They go, okay, so you want a mommy. Like, I'm not going to, you, you're used to someone doing your laundry, used to this. Like, I don't have time to be your mommy. Yeah. So it's like a lot of the high value girls are going to be scared. They they just need yeah. that replacement mommy. No, they don't need that. doesn't fucking matter. Like, he could be like, oh, I'm going to school. I'm going to college. I'm working on my business. Nobody gives a bit. When you're done, come talk to me, is what she would think. Okay? Yeah. But right now, it's not your time to talk to me. I'll see you in five years, see if you fucking got out of that house or not, right? So no job. No, that's a very good point to see if you got out of the house or not, because some people are very comfortable coming home to that laundry. Being yeah, done, they're so. staying there forever. It's like, no, I'm just doing this right now. Yeah, okay. Um, so living at home, um, no job. I'm just, I, some things that I think, uh, well, let's see. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, let's say a man who lies. Yeah, definitely not a liar. Because if you catch, it's like cockroaches. If you see one, there's a million you don't. Like, I need someone I can trust. Why do you think women stay with men that lie then? 
I think a lot of them are just insecurity and they don't think they deserve better. They can't be com comfortable alone. Like I love being alone. You really have to make my life better to get me, to get mm -hmm. me to share myself with you basically in, mm -hmm. in my opinion. That's why the more confident and successful a woman is, I think they have the same opinion. Mm -hmm. I think that on, on a deeper inspection that I've done, the reason why they stay with those men, are you ready for this? Is because now they know he's weak enough that they could control and destroy him because he had to lie to her. So she doesn't love him anymore. She hates him. After that, she hates him after he lies to her, right? Then she makes his life hell, but she'll use him forever because she knows if he has to lie to her, that means that he was afraid if she found the truth out. That's why he lied, right? And so when a woman, okay, here's my next question. What about a man who's afraid of you? I think everyone's afraid of me, so I don't know if I'm the right person to ask. But... Do I look like I'm afraid of you? No, I'm I'm just teasing. But um, no, I definitely don't want someone that's afraid of me. I need someone that's. I mean, I think I think I need someone that knows the right time to shut up, <laughs> so they don't need to be afraid of me. But yeah, I don't. I can be with someone that's actually afraid of me. Right. It's impossible, right? Yeah. Yeah, but don't you think someone who's lying to you is afraid of you? I think it's different. I think some people are just liars. Like some people just lie to lie. <laughs> That's because so I think the people that I've been around, they're just extreme liars. So I think the ones that they just, the ones that oh. I've caught lying is more just, they don't even know when they're lying. I think. Oh, you've had, you've had your lying fucking experiences, huh? Yeah. 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 The one where it's just like, okay, good morning. Oh, is it really morning? Let me, uh, okay, yeah. it is morning. Okay. Let me check. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck that. That was a relationship you were in? I, one with that. Cause I've been with the ones where you don't know they're lying. So it's yours. And like, Oh wow. And then you look back and you realize everything else. Yeah. You know, everything oh, you knew was a lie. <laughs> no, fuck that. Okay. See if there's anything else in my so, head. Yeah. So that's why if I catch someone lying, I'm like, okay, I'm out. <laughs> I don't need to yeah, wait to see that about other it. thousand cockroaches that are there. I just can't see. Absolutely. What about a man who has now, now I want you to look a little deep into this. Okay. What about a man who always has in his world and lets you know, that he always keeps the option to walk away from this relationship if you don't act right. How does See, that register for you when I say that? I feel like a lot of women might hate me for saying this, but this is why I never wanted to be married. So I was in a 15 year relationship, right? I was fine with commitment. I had no problem with that, but I didn't want to get married because for the reason you said, I want to know that at any point that he knows and vice versa, if you do or say too much, I can walk out that door and you will never see me again. I'm going to be respected more. I'm going to be treated better. And plus you I feel like it's in the back of a lot of people's heads that they know I have to go through absolute hell to get away from you. It's, it's stressful in any mm -hmm. marriage. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I feel like a lot of women don't like my answers in that, but yeah, yeah. women don't know what they like. So what about, <laughs> what, what do you, what do you feel about a man who holds the decision to walk away? If you don't act right at any point, if you disrespect him, you're done. Well, how do you feel about a man like that? If you're in a relationship with him? I think everyone should have that that relationship. You, you shouldn't be, that, ever right? be in a relationship with someone that disrespects you. And if they they start disrespecting you slowly, they want to, it's just a tip of the iceberg. They want to go a lot more. And if you allow it, it'll just get bigger and bigger. So you have to let people know if you disrespect me, you're done. Because there's a lot of women out there who won't. Exactly. That's nice. Okay. So I th this wraps our little section, you and I, Christine. But do you have any, what do you want to tell people? What's up? No, I just really respect what you're doing. I love that you're honest with women. I love you that you're physically out there with the guys, showing them what to do, leading by example. I love I love everything you're doing. I'm excited to be involved. And then I love to actually give a perspective from someone that's been in long-term relationships that but still knows what to look for and has stood back and watched what all my wealthy friends celebrity friends have done wrong and then hopefully yeah. advise all these guys that are the same level not to fail like they did at getting women like you do yeah i think i just it came to me something that would be extremely valuable but it would take time of course uh would be uh where you and i uh take a student or two or three or whatever depending on our time and um we watch them and you first help break down what you see and what you would kind of like a makeover. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I give the advice, but we're all, we're both helping them privately fix their character. Cause it's going to be different versus uh, a group of 20 people or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I just saw that that would be something, obviously that would, that would cost a lot guys, but it would be worth it. It would be worth every penny of it. But you and I, Christina are going to come up with the, you know, she's part of her and I are going to work, work in this industry together. So right now, it's just the beginnings of her and I coming up with a million ideas, everybody, right? So if you guys get ideas too, 
the next thing is our workshop, but that just came to me. Maybe during the workshop, uh, we, we take one or two people as a bonus and we spend 10 minutes and do a makeover, like a character and physical makeover and real advice, real questions asked, okay? Christine, thank you so much. It was, it was you know, the thing about beautiful women and men is we are suckers for you. Like, you, we would, we would sit in a ditch and talk to you. We would all be sitting on spikes right now, nails of bed. Uh, <laughs> we, would, we would sit on our heads. Uh, we would hold our shit and not go poo, just to not miss a moment. And so I think women should recognize that I respect God, I respect nature, I respect our humanity, who we are, and that women should know that men truly, truly are suckers for them and are so in love with them that we would literally do anything for women of beauty like you. So if, if you re recognize that that's actually how we see you outside of any argument that ever happened between you and a man, any upset that may ever occur, any misunderstanding, that the soul of the man is designed to fall in love with the woman and do everything for her from the depth of his gut, soul, fucking eternity. I mean that. I'm speaking for all men when I say that. So thank you for being here. Yeah, I love it you say that because that's why they literally, you know, back in the day would go to war for women. They want to do everything. They want to build the castle. Like they used to say, if guys could get laid in a cardboard box, you know, they wouldn't build these houses. So everything they do is truly for women. And a lot of women don't see that or appreciate it. So I love that. Yeah. I love that you said that. Yeah. Once we start to appreciate the natural process that we have, everyone's life is going to get way better because right now the, the sexes are at war with each other. So it's not working at all. Okay. Thank you, Christine. All right, everybody. We'll see Christine very soon again. Thank you very much. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. All right, we're going to continue on. Let me just check my screens here. You got to need your videos if you want to stay on. I'm about to delete you.